Aloha, my internet family. How are you today? Welcome back to Practical Printing. My wife and kids are out doing the Black Friday shopping thing, so I thought I would sneak a little time in front of the camera to get a chance to put out a review of the Tip Eye 3D printing pen that you see in front of you. So you ready? Let's do it. A couple of weeks ago, I was contacted and asked if I would like to review the Tip I 3D printing pen. I didn't have any experience with 3D printing pens. I haven't had a chance to play with one yet, so I was excited. I said, sure, I'd love to. Now, full disclosure on this, the manufacturer is in China, but they sell in the U.S. via Amazon and the rest of the world via Amazon. So the process that the manufacturer used to get the pen to me was they PayPal'd me the exact amount of money so that I could use my Amazon account and purchase the pen. So no additional funds changed hands, just exactly enough so that I could purchase the pen. Uh, rather than waiting the time for them to ship it from China, I could have it next day via Amazon Prime. And in fact, it actually ended up costing me a few dollars after the PayPal transaction fee. So other than that, I was not compensated in any way, and I get to keep the pen uh, for my kids to enjoy when this is all said and done. The nice thing about doing it that way, purchasing it on Amazon, is there was no chance for them to cherry pick it or send me a, you know, a, a hand-picked good batch pen. I was getting the same thing that you or anybody else purchasing one would get. So I got the genuine consumer experience with it. So the pen is available in four colors. It comes in white, blue, red, and yellow, and you don't get to choose your color. It's picked randomly for you. And it also is available with US, UK, Australia, and Europe plugs, it's depending on which Amazon, of course, that you're purchasing it from. It comes nicely boxed, and it has an instruction manual. Now, one thing with this pen is it's not battery powered. It is powered via a USB cable, a micro USB, and a 2 amp charger. So you do have to keep it in either an extension cord or near an outlet when you're using it. That could be inconvenient, um, but it might make it a little bit safer for kids that way. When I was using the pin, I realized that it does get warm up here near the front, not hot enough that I was going to burn myself unless you actually go up and touch the tip, and that gets pretty darn warm. And I also realized while reviewing this that I have no artistic talent whatsoever, none. So I punted and I started off doing basically a coloring book page where I traced the outlines. Um, if you look around on Amazon or online, you can find other pages similar to this for kids that they can basically create their own characters like this. It's very cute. Uh, to be able to review it, I wanted to push a couple of different filaments through it. Now the one thing that I have heard numerous times about 3D printing pens is that they tend to overheat um, or the cartridge will blow out. So I tried a couple of tests. I tried the orange PLA that they, was included in it, just a small sample. I started off I started off doing this little base, then I ran some generic red PLA that I had that was a higher temp PLA through it, uh, just to see how it would go through. It held up well for that, and that was probably about six feet of filament, or about two meters or so total. So I wanted to take it a little bit further, and that's where this blob, So I wanted to take it a little bit further, and that's where this blob comes in. 
Now, what I did was I spooled off two arms length, which is roughly two meters or about six feet of ABS. So that gave me a total of four meters or roughly 12 feet of ABS. And I wanted to see how much of that I could push through continuously before it overheated. The first time around, I was able to push through about a little bit, somewhere between a third to a half of the little spool that I had pulled off, um, just under two meters through, before it decided it was going to overheat and go to sleep. And I thought that was pretty impressive. That was roughly about nine minutes of continuous running. And you can see the time lapse in the corner uh, of that first step going out. I let it cool down for only about a minute or so before I set it to heat back up. And then the second time around, I was able to continue extruding the rest of it. So I did this uh, little pyramid with a porch. Um, again, nothing very artistic. If you'd really like to see some artistic work done with a 3D printing pen, I suggest going over and checking out KS Cortec. Uh, Chelsea does some amazing work. Also, Devin over at Make Anything has done some really impressive work with the 3D printing. So those were the most scientific tests that I could do, not being a qualified artist, to do some really fancy models with it. And that kind of puts me in the category of an elementary school kid that would be picking this thing up or possibly getting it for Christmas. So where does that leave us? The pen is reasonably priced. It is small. It can go in a stocking. It don't have to worry about a battery. And it is powered straight off the wall so kids can use it for a while. It does have a safety shutdown. So if you leave it turned on sitting in the stand like this for too long, it does shut itself off. So you don't have to worry about leaving with and walking away and having it left heated up, which made me feel safe. Now, I haven't worked with any other 3D printing pens, so I don't have a baseline to compare it to. But if I did have an elementary school age child, or if my children were younger in the Wayback Machine, this is something especially paired with coloring books or, or other sketches. Um, there's plenty of them that you can get online you know, that they can play with. It is definitely something I think that they would enjoy for Christmas or a holiday gift or a birthday. And it's definitely worth the, the price tag in that point. Um, so it's not a bad little unit. It is solidly made. The buttons are easy to access. One thing I did like about it is once you start extruding, you don't have to continuously hold the button. You tap it once to start extruding. You tap it again to stop the extrusion. Likewise, you push the back button to eject the filament or the function button on the other side to change your temperature and speed settings or to change it between ABS and PLA. Now, if you are going to be using this for a child, I do not recommend using ABS. Uh, in fact, what I recommend doing is, what I do recommend is picking something like this up at Amazon or a local retailer. It comes with an assortment of colors, but more importantly, these are made out of non-toxic PLA, and these are made to melt at the lower temperature, 180 to 200 range, so that they are safer and cooler for children to use. So that's all I have for you today. I have included links for the tip eye down below. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, this unit was provided to me free of charge to do this review. I've been compensated no other way, and this opinion is mine alone. And with that, I bid you aloha and good day.